Hey everybody, Mr. G here. Let's talk about divergent branches. This is by far the hardest thing we're going to talk about today. There's a lot going on here. You'll notice it's a very big scroll bar. So you can have as many branches as you'd like running at once. And people often do have multiple branches for different purposes. Uh, when you branch out from main more than once and each of those new branches has made commits to kind of make them unique, your repository will now have what's called a divergent history. This means that the history of your repository diverges as branches are kind of separating and making their own changes. This happens more often than you think. This especially happens with projects developed by more than one person, as different people will be working on different branches at a time, um, and whether it's to fix bugs, to create new features, whatever it may be. To kind of figure out what the, what divergent history means and what we need to be aware of, I have kind of generated a walkthrough example here for us. So in our scenario, we're going to have two programmers that are working on the same repository. The repository has had commits before, but only has a main branch on commit three. So we're not going to worry about commits two and one or anything that happened before. We're just going to start on commit three. Both programmers, we're going to call them user one and user two, are going to clone the repository to begin working on their assignments. Maybe they work together one, and they're going to work on some different things. This diagram shows a snapshot. So GitHub's in the middle. We see main is on uh, commit three. User one just cloned it. So they have had main three, all, all looking good. User two, same exact setup. So these two users are doing different things. User one is going to create a, a branch called bug fix. That's what they're working on. They're fixing some bugs. User two is going to create a branch called feature. They're working on a new feature for, for the app per se that this repository is for. Uh, just to kind of highlight some commands, user one did git branch bug fix and then git checkout bug fix so that they're ready to work on their branch. And similarly, user two did git branch feature and git checkout feature so they can work on the feature branch. So we're gonna notice um, user one's git now has two branches, main and bug fix, and the head is pointing at bug fix specifically. So we're looking from the perspective of bug fix. GitHub is unchanged right now. And user two has the feature branch that head is now looking at. So they're from the perspective of this new feature. So if we make commits, these people are working, they're changing a few things, they're making commits at various points of the day. Um, to start out, user one can makes commits four and six on their bug fix, bug fix branch. Meanwhile, user two makes commits five and seven on the feature branch. The numbers aren't super important here. The thing to keep in mind is that each of them has made two commits. They made quite a few changes to the repository uh, within their branch. And at this point, neither user has pushed their work to GitHub. So if we were to look, we now have three, four, six, bug fix is pointing to six for user one, GitHub still looking at just three, and then user two has five and seven with feature pointing to seven. So we've got a lot of information going in this repository. Let the day is ending that we've gotten a lot of work done. Both of these users are going to push their branches to GitHub so that the information is readily available from other sources and so that other people working in this repository, like each other in this case, uh, can have access to new information. So uh, the commands for that would be git push origin bug fix for user one and git push origin feature for user two. So they both push their branches out. So we'll notice user one's git does not change. They didn't do anything new. They just pushed their available work. GitHub though has a lot going on. GitHub now has what we can clearly see are two different branches. The bug fix branch has commits four and six and chains back to three. The feature branch has five and seven and chains back to three. And so we can see this is a classic example of divergent history. These branches are splitting apart from each other and are making their own kinds of changes. This is a very this is a very common kind of scenario. User two again unchanged. So preparing to merge by pulling. The next day they're both getting ready to implement solutions, but the bug fix is ready to go first. It was a little bit of an easier problem. They're ready to tackle it. A best practice when you are working with a repository from GitHub in a local Git. Uh, especially when other people are maybe making edits to this repository is before you do a merge to do a git pull and get all the most recent information from GitHub so that you're not missing anything really critical. So both of these programmers run git pull on their local repository. And now we'll notice that all three of these 
Git user one, GitHub, and user two are all going to look similar. Diagrams look slightly different because of the perspectives they're in, um, but they're all similar. So here, uh, user one now has five and seven in the feature branch, but their head is still focused on the bug fix branch. They're still focused on this most recent commit number six. GitHub, no updates. User two now has the bug fix branch up here, but head is still focused on feature and therefore commit seven. User one, the person working on the bug fix, is ready to merge. Their changes are ready to go. They want to merge bug fix into the main branch. Before merging, they do another git pull. Good practice. Just make sure they've got everything they need. There were none, so they can just continue. They don't have to check anything out. Because the main branch hasn't been changed since bug fix began, remember, all the other changes have been on the feature branch, so it hasn't affected main. It was still pointing at number three if we were looking up here. Because that hasn't changed, this is what we refer to as a simple merge. This was our earlier scenario. Uh, the process for merging, user one moves the head pointer to main and then with git checkout main. And then once they're there, uh, they merge it using git merge bug fix. So remember when you're in main, you your git merge is the branch you want to pull in. You want to merge into main. So we want to merge bug fix. So git merge bug fix. And now we get an updated repository here. So we still have three, four, six, five, and seven down here with feature, but we notice that main and bug fix are both pointing to commit six here and head is pointing to main, which just gets us to that same point. Uh, GitHub, not affected. User two, not affected. So user one has made this, this change, but they're ready to kind of commit those changes. They're ready to send them to GitHub. One thing they do though is bug fix no longer has a purpose. If we look here, bug fix is just pointing to the same place as main at this point it doesn't have any new information so we use git branch uh sorry hyphen d bug fix dash d to delete the bug fix bug fix branch and then we push all the information from main with git push origin main so now we'll notice no more bug fix branch here just head pointing to main pointing to commit six uh five and seven are still down here and github now just shows that main is pointing to commit six so it's completely updated as far as it's concerned the main branch is now on commit six but five and seven feature is still over here having stemmed from commit three and now you're seeing maybe where this is going to get into a little bit more of a complex scenario user two hasn't changed anything uh maybe they actually pulled so we actually see they're looking at main in the correct place so they have all the most up-to-date information uh and now they have everything they need so they used git pull again to see the most recent version. They're getting ready to work uh, on merging in their feature. So they get pulled as a first step. In order to merge their work, they move head to main. So we'll notice here, they were originally looking at the feature branch, but they know now that they're ready to merge, they wanna go look at the branch we want to merge into, which is main. So user one and GitHub are unchanged, but user two, instead of looking at feature, they're now focusing on this commit six with the main branch. So user two is in the position of a complex merge now, and there's a lot of text here because there's a lot going on. User one had a simple merge because nothing had happened to main since they started the bug fix branch. Now though, main has been updated to include information which was in bug fix, which has changed the main branch. It has new information. So it's no longer on that commit three. While the command is still straightforward, it's still just git merge feature. There's a bit more going on than users want user one's merge because of the changes to the main branch from before. So git handles a lot of this in the background. When git tries to do a complex merge, it has a system it follows. When user two writes the command git merge feature, it looks in three key places for, for information to make decisions. Number one, it looks for what we call the common ancestor commit between the two branches we are merging, which would be main and feature. So it looks for the most recent commit that both the main branch and the feature branch have in common. So if we were to look here, main's up here with four and six, features down here with five and seven. The most recent commit that both main has in its arrow cycle and feature has in its arrow cycle is commit three, where feature originally came from. So it looks there. It also looks at the most recent commit on both of the major branches. So on the main branch and on the feature branch. So it's at the same time, it's looking at commit three, commit six, and commit seven. And what it does is it makes some comparisons. 
it compares specifically it wants to compare seven and six what's in the feature branch to what's in the main branch because the goal is that we merge what's in seven into six but this gets a little more complicated because there's been changes since the feature branch left the cycle and so it uses commit three as a point of reference it looks at commit three and says all right what kind of changes were made since then uh, so which makes more sense, the things going on in feature or the things going on in main? And it uses this to make some smart decisions. Get a look between these three to find conflicting information. That's what it's on the lookout for. So this would be things like if you if both branches had edited the same file, but in different ways. So things that would be a little more incompatible. We call these this conflicting information merge conflicts. If there are any merge conflicts, Git will prompt you to look at the specific lines of code in the specific files, uh, where the conflicts are, and choose the versions that you want to save in the merge. So you might look at it and say, oh, that update to main actually makes more sense than what I added feature, so we'll take that part from main and we won't worry about what's in feature when we're merging in, or vice versa. So this allows you to determine which information should be final, and it could be code from either branch, or it could be both. You might realize that while it's not quite compatible with how it's originally written, you want both of those things available to you. Since there's more comparison going on, it's not as simple as just bringing everything up into commit six and leaving it there. Because there's all this potential interaction, Git creates a new commit that we call a merge commit when it does a complex merge like this. The new commit is special, it's different from most commits, because it points back both to, it points back, sorry, to both the final branch commits it came from. So since it contains information from both of them, since it contains information in six, from six and seven, we expect commit eight to point back to both six and seven because they were both relevant to this scenario. In the file diagram, we can see the results of them running the git merge, git merge feature. There was no merge conflicts as they didn't do anything that was really competing. And we can see that commit eight points back to both commit six from originally the main branch and before that is the bug fix and commit seven, which was our feature branch. And this diagram probably most shows why we use the word merge. We had two kind of separate instances of information that we combined together to make commit eight. And we can see here because main and feature are both pointing to the same place that they merged and turned into kind of one section. So now user two is at the position where they want to update GitHub. So first step, the feature branch is no longer helpful. We can see that main is already pointing there. So we don't have any other purposes for it. We're going to git branch dash D feature to delete feature. And now we'll git push origin main. Uh, and at the same time, we could think of like user one at this point could do a git pull and get all the, the most recent information. So now all three repositories, user one's git, GitHub, and user two's git, all have the same information. They have the main branch pointing to commit eight, and they have this history with this interesting branch in the middle because of the difference between bug fix and features that holds all of this history in case we need to look back at it. So this was a complex merge. We can obviously see why this is more complex. We actually had this kind of split section that then had to kind of get recombined with a commit that points to more than one place. There was a lot going on here. Divergent branching can be difficult to understand. There's a lot going on, but it's something that we're going to want to work on getting comfortable with and practice as much as we can, because in order to work most effectively online with other people or even just on larger projects, it's going to be really important to be able to use divergent branching to your advantage, where you and a classmate are breaking, maybe working on two different things via two different branches and could have the ability at the end to combine that information back into one most recent version of the repository with all the things that you'd like. So that's it for the basics of divergent branching here, this really difficult topic. To wrap this all up in the next video, I'm going to talk through like a summary of all this, the things to keep in mind, and some best practices, things, things that you should do when you are looking to use branching in Git.